can't be part of that. Yeah. Okay, it's 7 o'clock, so we'll call the meeting to order. Um, any additions to the agenda? Hearing none, somebody wish to move the agenda as presented? Lyle? Any discussion on Lyle's motion? Yeah. Pardon me? She just said that I dis disappeared. Sorry. Okay. So we'll call the question anyway. Yeah, I'll put my hand up. Um, oh, you're done. And it is carried. I didn't get the question. Oh, oh, you didn't get the question? Oh, no. Okay. So, yeah. So it's carried unanimously. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the next one item, which is the. Um, Council meeting. Any discussion on the minutes of March the 8th? Hearing none, somebody wish to move the minutes of March the 8th? Paul? Any discussion on Paul's motion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. I'm not getting the question. Can I? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so it's carried Okay, so now we will move on to the public hearing bylaw number 1496-21, amendments to land use bylaw number 1437-15. So this will be our public hearing portion. Have we had anything? So far, we've had nothing submitted in writing uh, as per the posting. Uh, Madeline, because we didn't uh, have anything or any questions come up, and Madeline presented at the last meeting. Um, we asked her not to drive up from Lethbridge for a five minute public hearing. So, unless council has any questions. Okay, if not, we'll wait five minutes in case somebody is late coming. 30. And so we'll wait until 7.07 .07 and then we'll call the public hearing back. And I'll work on the here. Still showing her, Karen? Yeah. Yep. I closed one. I closed one window, and your all your voting stuff was inside the other. So.
Central is black? No, <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a better question for Matt than me. <laughs> he did some practicing before he got here a while. He knows where the camera is and everything. I can't have my back to Tom. <laughs> you can spin around while you're doing it. I'm <laughs> lazy, <laughs> Actually, within five minutes of the cameras being on, he totally forgot about it. <laughs> I know sometimes you hear never pointed out if you look really close you can see how loud loads on everything too because you can see his computer screen. <laughs> well anyway it is uh, 7.06 so we'll go back to the public hearing. Is there anybody that has anything to say for or against the land use bylaw change? Hearing nobody, here we have a little um, comments submitted so I will declare the public hearing closed and adjourned. So now we'll move on to our delegation, which is the Balkan Kinsman Club. The floor is yours. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Matt. This is Kevin. We come representing the Kinsman Club of Balkan. Uh, we brought to you tonight a presentation on a project we've been working on for some time. You did receive some information prior to this, um, which we have uh, made some changes. So obviously tonight we don't come uh, looking for a decision, but more for your consideration. So we haven't exactly named named it for now. We just called it Kin Hangout. Um, this will hopefully be one of many uh, with different themes uh, into the future. And uh, so we've got it as a place where multi-age groups can enjoy solo sports at very minimal expense or commitment. A place where social circles can start up leagues on Tuesday nights. <clears throat> a place where the adults are begging the kids to go to the park. So here we see a rendering of two sets of horseshoe pits. Yep. Filled with sand and surrounded by concrete for safety and maintenance. Backboards for safety and branding. It's a place where we have our family reunions. We've got a set of three beanbag toss surrounded by concrete for landscaping and maintenance. Yep. A place where we have our birthday parties. Here we see three sets of washer toss games, surrounded by concrete and filled with sand for safety and maintenance. A place for seniors to show us how it's done. Here we see three sets of ladder ball games surrounded by concrete for low impact on the grass. It's a place for moms and dads to play while the kids are at the park. Here we see a picnic area, a place to go to have lunch and cook over the fire in any season. Family day, a place to take the kids to play while the adults play too. Here we see a social area with several picnic tables, um, a counter height area for cooking or putting your food prep on or serving from. It's a place to spend the week the weeknight playing league. Here's another rendering of the social area in the very center of the park. It's a place for several groups to enjoy at the same time, so it's not like a ball diamond or a soccer field. This is a place <coughs> where 10 to 20 groups can come on their own individually and be able to play um, individually and not have to um, play in teams or play league with them um, so they can come all separately. So when we first did first round of budgeting, we had planned to um, incorporate a lot of the fabrication and um, a lot of the build in-house. So we found out that we weren't gonna have to do um, to go to the extent of certifications necessarily as long as we were built with safety in mind and in a public space. <clears throat> and 
longer in-house abilities, um, more kind of make it to being able to break metals and and fabricate to the point of needing it. So we put this out to the tender, and we have a um, we received back a estimate that was way 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 out of budget of what we had anticipated on a project like this. So Kevin and I went back to the drawing board on the design and tried to figure out how we could cut um, metal fabrication design of it so that we could really start to eliminate the budget down to where we actually thought this was feasible. So we were able to come up with about $15,000 of, um, of cost savings. And in the budget here, you can see at the top, we have the concrete pads broken out, um, spectators, ladder ball, horseshoes, bean bag, and washer toss. Those are all concrete pads that will be installed flush with the grass with a minimum of about six, eight inch uh, perimeters so that we can run the mowers right over top of the concrete. This won't be a whippersnipping nightmare uh, for the town to look at maintenance. Um, second down, we've got the games fabrication broken out in brackets, shows you the amount of individual games that we've built. And on each one of these, you can see that there's two columns. Mid mild steel does not include the painting side, so these would have to get sandblasted and powder coated. And then stainless steel would be on the second column. And we keep moving down to fire pits. These are always made of, fire, of uh, mild steel. They would likely be ones that we have already in the campground. They're kind of a standard that they always make. There's three of those. Countertops, mild steel painted or stainless steel. So our mild steel option comes out at 17,850. Our stainless steel option comes out at 25,635. And our concrete costs only, not including labor, are about $4,500. Let's move to the next slide. So the stainless steel option is going to be zero maintenance. It's going to be stronger. So obviously you can think this is going to be a playground for some people. Like people are going to, their kids are going to be taking their bikes off of the bean bags. They're going to be using those ramps. The kids are going to be climbing the ladder vault like a ladder. So trying to build it with the intent of to take that abuse so that we're not constantly having to go back and repair them or fix them. So stainless steel is going to be stronger when it comes to that. It's not going to need any painting year over year and uh, therefore making it way more zero maintenance. Let's go one more slide. Mild steel. Mild steel. So it's going to be the less expensive option up front, possibly, um, because what's not included in this is the painting. So if we want to have 10 layers of paint in the next 10 years, this wants to become another one of the painting jobs for the town public works. Um, then we could save a little bit of cost up front, but it's going to cost us more down the road. Um, this is a project that the kids have been planning to help maintain. So this is kind of one of our places that we go to. We plan to you know, go dump some more sand in the spring and make sure that the horseshoe pits are kind of raked up and nice and maybe weeded a little bit. So this is, this is one of the projects that we don't plan on just handing over and forgetting about. We want this to become a place where we can, as a club, go and have a league on our fun meetings every month, um, go have a place where we can bring members in and have that enjoyment. <clears throat> and then we'll move along to the next one. So there's some things that aren't included in this budget uh, yet because we want to see kind of where the town sits um, in cooperation and um, I guess a partner with rec department. We have been working with Bonnie um, for the last two or three weeks, um, just between her and Kim, or her and, her and uh, Stu. Just trying to make sure that we're not bringing something to you that's going to have to be changed a whole bunch more times before it can actually be voted on. So a few things in here that aren't included are picnic tables. Obviously the, the budget is more than we had anticipated originally, so we were thinking let's just go with some plain, maybe used picnic tables. We could borrow some seasonally possibly from different places in the town. Um, just a wooden picnic table that we can put in all these places that still go on the concrete. They can still be mowed around. They're not being whipper snipped, they're not being beaten up and have to be repainted. The wood legs on these counters, um, just to save cost, we went to a wood leg instead of a steel leg. Uh, these are just going to be four by fours that if somebody does wreck or if the elements wreck, we can, we can swap them out pretty easy. They sleeve from the ground all the way to the counter. And then the center gazebo in the center here. We've kind of made some thoughts since we've built all these renderings, but I think we would maybe go to more of a roof style so that it's not just wide open and for looks, it's more for if it does, if we do all of a sudden have a rain out of nowhere for five minutes, people can kind of get shelter under it while we're waiting for the rain to come out. Um, 
this is a centric is evil, this is something that we could add later on. There's no reason why it can't be added later. So the location is the north side of Virginia Mitchell Park. So this is where the, what I believed to be when I was young, the original like steel park that was in there with the tunnel slide and, and that. Um, it's been an open space. I know for the last 10 or 15 years there's been lots of talks about how we're going to utilize that space. The Kinsman came to you, I think it would be about two years now, um, and kind of got a little bit of a blanket cooperation with Public Works to do some upgrades throughout the town. And this was one of them uh, a couple of years ago, so we painted the bollards red, we ran some new chain, and so now we're thinking this might be a good spot uh, right up against the walking path, the workout stations, and then also the Kids Park. It's still close in proximity to the campground, so the campground may be able to use it. Um, and it's already existing, uh, it's existing zoning is, is perfect, perfect for it. There's bathrooms not terribly far away, but in the campground area. Um, so bathrooms in the future may have to be <coughs> thought about if we want to have something, if this starts to become a place of use. Move to the next. So future addition here, we have uh, rendered out an outdoor stage and we've slid this park as far as we can towards the uh, exercise stations. Yeah, right. So in the short term, there'd be a big open grass area where this current outdoor stage is, and that would be used for bigger events. If people wanted to have a bunch of people over, they have their own launcher set up. They might bring their own tables. Um, they can play bocce ball there if they want. And then in the future, we plan an outdoor stage. We can use it for live entertainment. We can maybe use it for ceremonies, uh, recitals, practices, presentations outdoor theater, um, but what what better place to have um, live entertainment um, than a place that you can play games until 10 o'clock, 10.30, because there's light there. And then the next, here's another front view, same thing. And uh, Kevin had built, he rendered this out so that it actually matches the front two um, pillars, match the existing monument that's over in the north side part. Here's an overview of kind of where it would sit, so you can see most of the games and the stuff that we talked about in the project are pushed up towards the walking path. And the theater was pushed, we put it this way because then we would be blasting music away from houses um, instead of into town, um, or whatever we end up using the theater for. So the request for consideration, so the Kinsman Club and the Rec Department are submitting for two separate grants for the funds towards this project. We request that the Town of Vulcan join us as a partner in this community initiative. We've split this into two options uh, for consideration. We've kindly asked for $10,000 towards the fabrication of the games, fire pits, and counters. And we've kindly asked that the Town of Vulcan pay for the concrete portion of this project, supply and install. Or, alternatively, we would ask that you would match dollar for dollar up to 15,000 as we move through the project. And that option would be there for the purpose of if we start to strip pieces out of that project, then we do it together. So if we decide to cut the games down or we decide to um, find ways of savings, then we're saving together as a uh, club and the town. And we thought this is something that Bonnie would have a little more insight in, but we thought if we were successful with the grant funding and the town um, uh, accepts our partnership, then if we are successful in our grants, we would um, try to reimburse the town's investment first with the grants. So essentially, the town would then have an opportunity, assuming that we were allowed to do that from our granting, then the town would have the opportunity to say, yes, we'll take it as reimbursement, or no, we'll use it to continue furthering this project, and either we do the stage, or we do some lights, or we add some bathrooms, or we do the next stage of the next part. So does anybody have any questions? Um, for the um, the washer toss and the bean bag, who supplies the bean bags and the washers and all that stuff? So the idea here is that we this is not a place to be managed. So the whole point of this is low maintenance, low manage. You know, this is a place like a baseball diamond. You bring your own bats, your gloves. Your, you know, the only thing that's supplied there is the shale and the grass, the, the grass and the benches. And so the idea here is that bring your own bring your own stuff bring your food, bring your hot dog sticks, bring your washer tosses, your horseshoes, possibility for businesses in town to 
I'll possibly start selling better quality stuff even of individual items. There's a possibility that the Kinsman would use it as a fundraiser to buy stuff that goes with the park from us so that it will help future projects or maintenance pro on the projects. So there's lots of opportunity there, but the whole idea, yes, is that if you want to come play and have fun, then you bring it because we don't want the rec department managing, you know, checking out or shoes or, and I think also the liability side of that for somebody to actually have ownership of it, like the town have ownership of horseshoes that went somewhere I shouldn't have went, and so on. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Oh, uh, um, if this was all approved, when would you start as soon as you can? Yeah, so we thought it was a great, so we've been pondering this through the winter um, a little bit just because there's been such restriction, such a restriction right now on the social gathering. I mean, it's cut um, like team sports have been affected massively. Even though we try to social distance, this isn't a team sport. Um, leagues are going to be one on ones. It's outside, and I think that this is going to be a massive year where people are going to be sitting out in the rain in a chair, saying, "I'm not going inside. I don't care. It's raining. I'm staying outside." So we thought if we could make it happen. We've got to wait for the ground to harden up a little bit for us to get in there, I think, um, to actually start digging dirt and putting concrete pads down. But once the concrete pads are down, like this, this would take, I bet you we could have this installed in less than a week. Um, and the Kinsmen are going to be involved in the installation and the, the work that goes along with it. Essentially, what's going, how this will be built is that each pad will have receivers in the concrete, so that if we do have vandalism or we do have theft, that we'll be able to slide a new one back into it, instead of concreting in everything that we do and having to cut it off and jackhammer out more concrete or something like that. So if we could be, if this could be ready to go by July, July 1st, that gives us like three, three warm months of use and also use right into the winter time. If we have mild winters, people can come with shovels or air blowers, the fire pits are there. They can be playing bean bags with a winter coat on, there's no problem. Any other um, So what would be an estimate in terms of the yearly cost? I know that it's quite low maintenance, but is there any projections that you have? Or? Costs, I think, are gonna be basically cutting the grass. There's nothing, there's no consumable in the project. Um, there might be, we might bury something in there for theft, I guess, if some, like somebody sees the value in something, but all of the, all of the design that Kevin and I have worked on in terms of, you know, how are we going to bolt these to concrete, how are we going to make them theft proof, how are we going to make them vandalism proof, it was all kind of part of the design so that we weren't having to, you know, throw a thousand bucks at it every single year just because somebody keeps, you know, it's like this, the saw horse at a playground, like nobody stole those. How do we make them not, you know, it's basically the value of the metal is going to be the only thing that interests them. But in terms of maintenance, if it's grass getting cut in the future, possibly if we have power available at the theater um, or the, the stage, it's going to be minimal. I would say even if you had five concerts a year, it'd probably be like less than two or three hundred bucks in power. So um, street lights possibly in the future if we wanted to make people be able to stay there, but that comes with pros and cons. You know, we want maybe people to go home. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, the sun's down, go home now. Um, so, yeah, I don't think, I mean, you're not offering free firewood, you're not having any consumables, so I think we're good there. Um, in the future, if we do have more funding or if we're very successful with granting, um, with grant monies, we would put maybe concrete picnic tables there so that people aren't wrecking them, we're not painting them, they're not stealing them. Um, they're there for a long time. We did the solar tree, we put a concrete. Um, one over there with the uh, deck boards on it, and I mean, it looks like it did, I don't know how many years ago that was, but wow. Eight. Yeah. So yeah, that was long-winded, but I hope that answers your question. Thank you. <laughs> did you guys uh, contemplate galvanized instead of stainless? Like, I, I was just, I don't know what the pricing is. I mean, I know like, at the swimming pool, the diving tower was all designed and built. And galvanized. It went to Calgary to galvanize. So I don't know what I know. It's probably, it's got, probably going to be cheaper than stainless. But is it uh, a method? It's going to be one step up from powder coat. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I think the problem is like he had kind of explained that right now there's such an unknown with steel pricing right now. Like he said, it's like even 
even giving people 30 days on an estimate, he said that, that can basically make them win or lose on their estimates because of the, the fluctuations of, of steel. But um, I know just from like when we built our last project, the, by the time you get it sandblasted and you get it uh, dipped or you get it um, painted, you're very, very close to stainless steel. Um, so we, we are still going to, like now that we've got a plan and we, we're kind of, okay, this is what we know, we're still going to keep getting this tendered. Um, yeah, well, it was just another, another avenue. I, I, in the stainless steel, it's definitely is a, a nicer, easier. you know, finish, but I just know that we just had the pool project as an example. The company that built the, the stairs were all sent to Calgary to be get, get, get this, or I mean, Gelman's dip, so. Any other questions for Matt or Kevin? We appreciate you uh, doing the rendering and, and uh, the pro you know proposing the project to the town. It looks great. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, anyway. Yeah, it is ready. Um, like back to when um, Kevin's done a really good job of. Um, we saw all of the different drafts, so he's got everything specked out, uh, spacing between sidewalk pads. Um, Basically ready to hand deliver uh, for them to fab out all of the all of the gains in the stainless steel or galvanized steel. Um, Which so it's <laughs> basically ready. Um, I don't know if we could be any more ready outside of kind of changing the designs or how many we do just to try and save money. Um, but I think that there's this this in my opinion is what everybody does already in their backyards, but now we can start to do it out in, in as a group, and I think that. Because it's not a team sport, um, people can be doing it as a practice, just one person. Your teenagers can be out there, they can be doing something instead of uh, biking downtown or rolling downtown. Now they're actually at a place that it's not a playground, but it's like a park that you're going to do even school sports in. The school might even take, take uh, use of it for some of their gym classes. So. Anyhow, thank you for letting us present, and I'll be in touch through Bonnie. We well, appreciate you guys taking the time. And um, thank you. Again, is there any other questions from out? Thank you. Thank you very much. much. You guys are welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting if you like. Uh, or you can run home and watch it on TV. Or, <laughs> <laughs> or you can go home and have supper. Yeah. Thank you. All right. okay. yeah, thank thank you, you very much. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Okay. Moving on to correspondence. Communities and Blooms request. So, the original motion for the Communities and Blooms was for annual funding. It is in the budget. Uh, as you recall, last year, because they couldn't do it as much, they uh, uh, they didn't ask for the funding. But it's already budgeted for, so you don't really need to do anything with this, other than, unless you would like to, uh, to not go ahead with it. Did we send them a thank you letter last year? Yes, yeah. sir. I'll make that motion. You don't need to make a motion on this one. No, okay. it's already in your budget, and uh, it, it was recurring based on your uh, uh, first motion on it. So, okay. it it is something that uh, in future conversations we may want to add, add to the recurring grants. Mm -hmm. So, but no, you don't need to do a motion if as long as you're fine with the. Well, I thought it was really good of them last year to say we don't need it mm -hmm. instead of just taking it anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so. so do we take this out of the recurring grants or could this come out of like marketing? No. Or? This, this comes out of the parks budget. Parks budget. Yeah. Okay. I just thought it really is marketing for our town. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. It's been in the park budget for several years. Okay. So any questions on Communities and Bloom? Okay, hearing none, you, everybody should have had an opportunity to read the letter from Reeve Schneider. Any questions on their contributions? Um, I, I think we need to send a thank you letter back to them, thanking them for their commitment to the project. And, I was thinking after that there was a comment in the paper, but um, there's a comment in the paper. Any questions? Okay, here and now we'll move on to the golf course. So I'm already thinking we could take that one. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> 
so Kim and I met and um, they we had discussed lots of different options and they chose to to uh, take back to their board which you know came a motion for them to offer forty two thousand three hundred and seventy dollars towards the Payment of, payment of loan, and then they also, in the second part of that, has made a request to meet with either members of council or council as a whole. But I think that, seems how that Kim and I met, that we probably should, uh, if we accept their request to meet, we should meet as a, as a ask them to come and meet with us at the council as a whole. So there can be questions asked, and, and more than just Kim and I. Well, is it the 43,370 exactly half it's, of the home? It's half. Half of our home. Now, I guess the, the basis of the conversation around that is the ongoing. Uh, as, as you all are aware, the, uh, the loan is just about paid for. And as we move forward, the conversation was uh, you know, working together, get that paid for. And then looking at that uh, agreement long term is trying to find a solution that benefits everybody. Is essentially what they would like to talk to council about. Okay. Well, if the I don't quite get it. If it's just about paid off, and we're thinking about long term, like is long term just like the balance of the loan or? I think those are discussion items that need to be discussed in a opportunity where we can discuss it with having an opportunity to throw our thoughts and ideas on the table of what direction we should go. Because the agreement as it states today is that the golf course loan is the golf course's loan until the loan is paid off 100% back to the town. So that's what the agreement says. There are some of us and some people that believe that there should be a change in the philosophy of what that agreement says. So I think that we need to be able to, being that it's an agreement, it's a legal agreement, that we should meet in a in camera or in a uh, what's our closed session to discuss the pros and cons and the direction that we could go to make this agreement better or worse or whatever. And the reason why you could do that in closed session would be that it's a, uh, it's a discussion uh, that could lead to potential amendments. So if you look at it as, uh, as uh, the possibility for amendments, it allows you to close the meeting to have those discussions of, of the outcomes of both and to be very candid about the conversation. Okay. okay. So anyway, um, I guess we probably mean that there'll be four of us a check for $43,370. We probably should make a motion of where that money is going to go. Um, I know, do, what, do, I know what their intent is, and but that's not what we don't have to. But um, and we can do that when when we get the check, we can put it on the agenda. Okay. Or, or you can discuss it when we do the final budget, if it comes before we do the budget in April. Okay, sounds good. Okay, then also about the meeting with them. Does anybody have an issue with us trying to get together? I, I personally believe that we should do it as a as, as a committee, as a complete group so that we have an opportunity to hear all the pros and cons of the uh, directions that they believe that they need to discuss. Fine by me. Okay, so right. if that's... Current right. administration, would yes. you uh, wish arrange to a committee of the whole meeting? Yeah. Uh, with the Vulcan Golf and Country Club to be invited? Okay, okay. so we've got a... Or, Georgia, uh, Georgia Lee. Georgia Lee means that we invite the golf course. Do a special meeting. You want to do a special meeting or just or do you a want to do the whole? Maybe the whole. A uh, special meeting has one specific purpose, which this book qualifies as. Uh, committee of the whole, you can add extra business to if you'd like to. So, special meeting is fine. Okay. Okay, any discussion on Georgia's motion? Uh, so for a special meeting from council, you do have to set a date in your motion. Oh, okay. uh, so if we don't have one yet, then uh, a committee of the whole. Committee of whole. Yeah, the hard part is setting a date without, without talking to the golf course. Yeah, yeah. We have to so set a date with the committee of the whole. You do. 
they're, in the motion? Yeah, they're both, you have to record what they're for and purpose so that, because that part has to be public. So, um, you can direct administration to uh, coordinate the meeting and then we can uh, we can ratify that with, uh, with the motion. Okay. So, yeah. So, so does that apply fair? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, George Lee has a motion on the floor to invite the Golf Club Executive to this meeting. Special meeting. Um, have administration that set up a special meeting. Okay, any question on George Julius' motion? Are you ready for it, Aaron? Yeah. Er, hearing none, we'll call the question. Okay. George Julius must have come up good this time. No? We're good. Great, it's carried unanimously. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the letter from Municipal Affairs for the Disaster Relief Program changes. Um, Kim and I had a bit of a discussion on this, and I said, well, it really hasn't ever affected us much. And he reminded me that it had, because we have um, had the, uh, when we had the, over in High River, they had the disaster, we did have the uh, participate in this money to pay for when we opened up the open house, the, uh, Evacuation Center. Evacuation Center. So yeah. we did participate. Who's to say it's running, but doesn't come through? Yeah. No, no, I know, but I mean, we haven't had to use one, yeah. is what I had said to Kim, and then he corrected me, so. But, uh, so everybody's had the opportunity to realize that it's a more on a one-time basis, not a reoccurring one. And okay, any thoughts, questions? So does this apply also to say, hopefully it would never happen, you have tornadoes go through two years in a row, or five years in a row? Yes. So that's if what everybody lost their house the first time they built a new one and the tornado came back, second time you're on your own? They're not going to cover. Yeah. And, and the reason why, based on, uh, I, I did attend the town hall meeting that they discussed this with, and the uh, big push is to make sure that everybody is adequate. Okay, so, yeah, you, so your own personal insurance would cover that's, it. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and so when they flooding, is is were they? If you had your own personal insurance, did they pay for it, or did they? Did you wait for the province? Well, it did. It depended on, and I'm not sure 100 percent on on each individual uh, case how they do it. The DRP helps anybody that is displaced, all all of those things, lost their home with that recovery up to a certain amount. One thing that they're saying, this is uh, the other side of it, is for municipalities, if they have a low-lying area that's, uh, that's identified as a flood zone, you're on the hook. If you're allowing people to build there again, then you as a municipality are, are on the hook for that, not province to pay for that. So it, it's hopefully going to spur some changes uh, from the development side for a lot of municipalities as well. And so it, it, at the end of the day, when, uh, when they did the presentation on it, it came down to uh, the amount of disasters that Alberta's having and the, and the, the sheer volume. And we, we had the best DRP program in Canada. And they're now, of course, with less money being around, they're, they're bringing it down to what the other provinces are comparable. So like the hailstorm in Northeast Calgary, so is, is the city responsible for letting people build in that little area? <laughs> I mean, like, how far did they yeah, and I, this? Yeah, I'm not 100% sure about where that. So, but again, they're, on that they're basically one there, saying no second claims. Yeah, so Never. on that one there, the, the province might say, and I'm not sure, on the hail, you can get hail insurance. Um, overland flooding is a little harder to get than sewer backup. But, um, so... If you don't want to buy hail insurance and you live in those areas that are prone to chance. hail, it's like a lot of industries that, like farming, if you have you live in a hail bath, to you in your yeah. No, I just wondered if it was mainly flooding they were talking about. No, I, I think they're trying to get away from a lot of it, um, but again, 
I mean, as a municipality, I think that they're really pushing that, you know, the flood, the fires, the ones that are really hard to, to um, say we shouldn't be building in those areas, but yet. Trying to mitigate the risk. Yeah. Do everything we can to. Well, you got a question or comment? Uh, well, two questions. Uh, when it talks about homeowners, what about for businesses? I would assume it would be the same way. Yeah, it's, uh, it's property owners. Okay. And the second thing is, um, you better go to the, because it's a real estate professional, i got to go to this website to see if anything's been, uh, if there's been any claims on the, the property. Wouldn't it be, I would find it beneficial if something like, like that would be registered on the Alberta Plant Titles Registry. Because uh, then when you're checking a property, you can see, you know right away, I think there's less chance of things being missed. Hmm. That would make yeah, my two cents. And that one would be completely up to the province yeah. uh, to, to register that on title. Um, if there has been DRP relief to it in the past. But uh, something, I know you're quite involved in the Real Estate Association, that might be something that uh, as a group could be asked for, for the value of that, because that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, if somebody wish to move the correspondence for information, any question, Miles? Any discussion on Lyle's motion to file? Okay, none. We will call the question. It's carried unanimously. Okay, moving on to financial reports. I don't like the little number that I see. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. As council well aware, we uh, you guys approved a three million dollar line of credit for the purpose of uh, building the pool before you uh, actually borrow the funds, and the fact that we are ninety eight percent finished the project and uh, and so far we're at, at the end of February we are only a uh, hundred thousand dollars into our line of credit. I removed that for oh, okay. would move it for yeah. to receive it for information. Okay, Lorna moves it. Any other discussion on Lorna's motion? Okay, then we'll call the question. <coughs> That's carried unanimously. Okay, moving on to year to date. Being that it's February and a lot of those lines are, uh, are blank, no, there's nothing that stands out. That's uh, two months worth of expenses on a $6 million budget for, you know, uh, if you do just the simple math, we spend about $600,000 a month. I'll move to receive for information. Okay. All moves. Any discussion on Paul's motion? Hearing none, we'll call the question. And it is carried unanimously. Okay, moving on to bylaws and policies. Okay, bylaw number 1496 21. So, as council is aware, this is the amendment to the land use bylaw. Madeline was here to uh, to answer any questions uh, a month ago. Uh, it was advertised in the paper. We held a public hearing. We received no feedback. Uh, recommendation on this it would be to give second and third reading, if uh, council so chooses. Uh, Nothing has changed since you uh, saw the report the last time. Any questions on any of the uh, 
I'll make the motion for I introduce second reading. Okay, so I'll move the second. Any discussion on Lyle's motion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. And it is carried unanimously. Okay, moving on to third. Somebody wish to introduce their um, third person? Third reading. Okay, moved by Paul. Any discussion on Paul's motion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. And again, it is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Moving on to file of policy A16, Mayor and Deputy Mayor appointment procedures. So everybody should remember why we have this in front of us, is that we're going to the next election, elect seven councillors, and we will appoint the mayor from within. So Kim has done some studying. So looking at the procedural bylaw, many of the procedural bylaws, all they say in it is, appoint the mayor, appoint the deputy mayor. They don't really get into specifics. And really in your procedural bylaw, it's good to define the points of what you're doing, but you can have in policy for the procedure about how you're gonna count votes, how you're gonna draw names, so all of those. So what I did is we, you had an existing policy A16, and if you all remember, it basically said that you were going to uh, elect, or sorry, appoint a deputy mayor on a rotation schedule, and here's a schedule. So it was just the one line, and then the entire schedule for the year. So what I've done is I've broken down the mayor appointment into the four bullet points, and then the deputy mayor into the uh, seven bullet points, and returned with the schedule. So this way, if, if there's a change in procedure that you would like to see, it's as simple as bringing back this policy and presenting it at a meeting, and uh, through resolution you can change. And really, as long as you have your mayor appointment bylaw, and you have your procedural bylaw that says that you will do it, then your procedure will, uh, through this policy, will do all the fine points of drawing the name. And I guess we'll, we'll get right to that, like the drawing of the name, uh, based on the feedback that you guys provided on the appointment of the mayor, uh, one of the nominations to be in confidence. So basically you hand out a piece of paper, Everybody writes down who they want to be the mayor, you read the names out, if they accept the nomination or not. Once all the nominations are accepted, uh, if it's only one person, then they're declared the mayor. If it's uh, multiple people, then you uh, vote by secret ballot, which is what you guys had asked for as well. So then you vote for the one or the three. Uh, Tom, when I was reviewing this with us, uh, we did put in there, what if there was a tie? If there's only two people and odd numbers of councillors, there shouldn't be a tie. But if you had three people that put their name down and two voted for one, two voted for the other one, you know, there is a chance for a tie. So in the case of a tie, you would uh, put the names into the uh, receptacle. The CAO would draw the name and that would be the mayor. That, I don't know. Okay, what if nobody wants to be mayor? Somebody has to be, so you, you, you have to... No, it's, it's not addressed in this. Right. Right. So it, there, there's no way around that because you have to know, you have to do the procedure. So mm -hmm. if, if you were to do the nominations and uh, no one, then you would repeat the nomination process, just like you know, the call for nominations the three times. Yeah. So that's, that's normal Robert's rule of the order for okay. procedure. So should that always be pointed out to people when they put their name in to be a councillor, that you may be expected to be mayor? No, I don't think so. Okay. I, I think though that, that anybody that puts their name in for council expects that they're going to have to do some positions on council. So I think that it would be just a normal... I, I don't know, what do you guys think? I, I think that most councillors put their name in and they realize that they're going to have to sit on a committee or well, like some committees. Matt's question this evening when I was teasing him about running. He's talking about reducing the number of committees. He's aware of what's going on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, but I mean, again, too, I mean, when you're appointed to any committee, um, somebody realizes that they're going to have to be a chair of that committee. Um, anyway, Lyle, you got a comment, question? I was just going to say, if people run, 
running for council, running for council. I mean, they can get, it doesn't mean they could end up being mayor if they don't want to. I mean, if, if they get nominated, then they can just, you know, decline, decline the nomination. But I guess what Paul's thought is that we have to have a caveat in there that says something about if nobody wishes to be mayor, I think that by the end of that meeting, you'd have a pretty good discussion of a one person that... It, you cannot move on from your meeting until your mayor is taken the oath, so... Yeah, so. That's just, yes. And that's part of the procedural bylaw. And you won't stay past 11. <laughs> so I, won't, I won't, and somebody else might. <laughs> yes. So any work meeting, part of the procedures for the work meeting is is the first order of business following. And that's something that we have to change in there. But all the councillors have to do your oath of office. And that's the first thing that you do, because you need to take your oath of office before you can start making motions. So even appointing the mayor, everybody has to take the oath of office. So you can make a collective decision, then move on there. So you could move on until you've appointed a mayor, and you, as long as you put that in your uh, in the procedural bylaw, which is what we're working on next, that that's the second order of business. You can't move on until you have a mayor appointed. So you couldn't adjourn the meeting. You couldn't do anything until until you did that. So you, you might be able to go past the level. <laughs> Right. You, you, mean, could, you might be able to go past the lead of it. Yeah. <laughs> the last thing I'd like to point out is on the uh, on the deputy mayor. Uh, as you know, in the past, the deputy mayor uh, just went around the table in seating order, and uh, everybody's name was were put in, and that was your term, and it was for the eight month uh, rotation. Because you have the opportunity to change the mayor mid term with this, uh, possibly somebody that's in there. Uh, rotation of being the uh, deputy mayor may come out for that position of mayor. So what we did is just put a clause in there that the outgoing mayor would fill the position of the vacant position on the, on the mayor schedule. So, and then uh, every new council will just do the schedule, fill in the names similar to what we've done with the policy in the past, and then just amend it every every four years. Uh, uh, just hypothetically speaking, just once again, if no one decided to run for mayor, uh, what if uh, there's okay? What if uh, okay? It's our council, and we vote in Laura to become mayor, and then the second year we decide, no, it's time for George Lee to become mayor. On the Third year, could Laura go back? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's yep. 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 It's, it's a yearly appointment, and yep. so we you cover off in that yep. by this statement in the uh, this is both in the bylaw and in the uh, policy, and it's word for word. The term for the office of the appointed mayor shall be for a period of one year, and shall commence on the date of the initial appointment at the annual organization meeting and shall run until the date of the following annual organization meeting. So it's a one year term, so once you're done, you can either renominate or you can uh, or nominate somebody else and if you want to switch it up, that's completely up to the council of the day. This is just being nitpicky, but uh, so the deputy mayor is going to be the uh, mayor that's stepping down, say? Yes. But he's that is only for eight months, and you've got a whole year that the new mayor is there. So you just take he, four months of hers and yeah, four months of somebody else's? Basically, throughout, you're putting them into this schedule wherever it happens to be. So really, the only... You have two... You only have one, really, that happens close to an org meeting, and that would be this one, so it... Uh, if Laura put her name forward in October for this, she would start her deputy mayor. So say Laura put her name in, Tom stepped down, Tom would go into Laura's spot in, in here, which would put him into deputy mayor for the next term. Uh, if Paul took deputy mayor in the third year, the outgoing mayor would go into this position, so he essentially would not be the deputy mayor through the rest of the term. But we also put the clause in there 
that the deputy mayor could be removed without reason or cause by the majority vote of the council. So if somebody was in the deputy mayor position and was incapable of fulfilling the duties or uh, was not speaking on uh, on behalf of the of council, they could be removed by a motion of council. And the MGA, apart from our policy, allows council whatever method you want for it. All it says is that you have to appoint a deputy mayor. This shows the procedure under normal circumstances. You could always, just by resolution, of And some municipalities don't revolve their deputy mayor or their deputy uh, position at all. They, they pick it again. So theoretically, you could have your mayor change position, but your deputy mayor could be in there for four years. We have chosen to always rotate it around, hoping that you know, if something happened, that person would get an opportunity to participate in the deputy mayor's role. So. And that was based on the conversation that you guys provided, uh, that you liked the idea of the deputy mayor role. One thing uh, that I did mention to Tom when I was drafting this, that I did run into in one community, is they also put a clause in their procedural bylaw that the deputy mayor chair one meeting during their term. So they did the eight month term. Mm -hmm. They and it doesn't it didn't say which meeting, but it was the, the way they worded it is they were given the opportunity to chair one meeting per term. So that's something that you may want to add as well. Like I said, this is this is an amendment to a policy, so yes, so I put it policy. together, and uh, this is for for your feedback. So it it, it wasn't it wasn't a. It wasn't a big enough thing that I needed to put it, you know, I felt that I needed to put it in the procedure right away. But. There's enough committee meetings where everybody gets to chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you get your experience at that. If you want to. If you want to. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. If you want it. So. Okay. Any yeah. other thoughts or questions on this? Is it good enough to... <clears throat> if you like it, you can amend it. If you would like to see me do some changes to it, I can take it back and, uh, and bring it back to the next meeting. Or we can approve it. Or you can approve it this evening. Yeah. I think probably once it goes into effect, then maybe the following year you might want to see some changes. That's right. You, yeah, some councils might feel that you know, it that doesn't work or it does work. So right. yeah. I think on our behalf for going forward, I would move that we. And we're just trying to make it easier for the next council so that. Just for the first year for them to. For the, for the first one. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, the, we, what's our thoughts? Oh, I'm sorry. Did you see it move up? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you, Mayor. To amend the policy as presented? Yes, that sounds good. I think that's how it's written. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it says. Okay. Any discussion on Laura, Lorna's motion? Hearing none, I will call the question. It is carried unanimously. Thank you. Moving on to the bylaw number 1497-21, Intermunicipal Collaboration Framework Agreement with Vulcan County. So, as you're all aware, we've been working on the, uh, this ICF agreement. Uh, we met with the county council, uh, members of town council and county council on January 25th. Through that, we reviewed the majority of the agreements that we had in place, and it, through that discussion, it was agreed that uh, the ICF, where the county had done a few in the, in the past with other rurals, that they identified, you know, road stuff and all the things that needed to be done in the, in the by, by the Municipal Government Act for us to identify in the agreement. We had so many agreements already in place that it was agreed that we would list all of our secondary agreements, like our, our rec agreement, uh, our partnership in South Grove and Fresk and all, all of those, we, we, would, we would name those and then acknowledge that we are continuing to work on those agreements. So that's why you can see in certain areas in there, uh, like our recreation agreement, uh, those are ongoing. So the reason why this came the way that it did is these need to be approved by the end of the month. The county's actually holding a special meeting tomorrow to do just about all the villages uh, and the town. So this really, this agreement through bylaw will allow us to meet 
the expectation of the, uh, and the requirements of the Municipal Government Act. We will continue to work, uh, you guys know, uh, our recreation agreement, uh, the agreement that's going to come forward for water and sewer servicing. Those are going to be big agreements that are going to take quite a bit of time to work on. So this helps us to uh, fulfill our mandate for having the, the ICF completed, but also acknowledges that we have a lot of work to do on, uh, on those agreements inside them, and those agreements are listed as part of that main agreement. The document itself did not change other than this list of agreement pages. It, the MGA did change the requirement uh, when they all started. They did, it did need to be done by bylaw. Uh, they had, now it could be done through resolution. You could make a resolution to just accept the agreement. The county for uh, continuity, they started all theirs with bylaws, so they suggested that, uh, that we move forward with the bylaws as well. And they, and they drafted up all the ones for the villages and that, so I just uh, put the bylaw together for the council. So you're in agreement, you can provide all three readings. This is, this is one of those agreements, uh, bylaws for this agreement that you can pass all three readings this evening if you'd like, uh, but you have to do uh, unanimous consent to do, to do the, uh, uh, on the introduction for third reading. So uh, just to keep that in mind, you'll need four motions if you'd like to move forward. Okay, thoughts, folks? on Miles' motion. Hearing none, we'll call the question. And it is carried unanimously. Okay. Second. George mm -hmm. Lee. Any discussion on George Lee's motion? Hearing none, I will call the question. And it is carried unanimously. Introduction of the third by Paul. It has to be unanimous to proceed on. Any discussion, question? Hearing none, I'll call the question. Unanimously. Okay, third. Laura. Any discussion on the bar's motion? Hearing none, we'll call the question. And it is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. So that ends one era of documents for the province. And we will move on to her visits in the Kinsman Community so, Service Space. So we received most of the information obviously before our deadline for putting the uh, agenda together. As Matt explained, there has been some changes since, since that point. So the recommendations and that were put forward in this were based on uh, information we had before. Being that there is a, a larger ask and uh, if council would like some more time for us to put together further information, or I guess if if we're not interested in participating in it fully tonight, I, I think that we need to give the Kinsman Club a strong feeling one way or the other whether we're interested in participating in this, so they can either invest more time or else they can say no, it's not going to fly. Let's go away. Um, I appreciate that originally we kind of thought that the money would be a smaller amount, but after they realized the pricing of steel and the pricing of some of the stuff was going to be more than what they anticipated, that um, we probably need a little bit more time on how to come up with it. So I, I personally think that we should break it down into two parts, but um, 
And, and, and one thing that you could do, you can do is obviously we put together the, the proposal to, uh, for for the information that we had. So if council wants to move forward with this, you can approve the motions that that are there, and then have direct administration to look at uh, at funding for uh, the remaining funding because the the request was basically ten thousand. Uh, or a fifteen thousand dollar, or up to a fifteen thousand dollar match, plus the concrete work. So the concrete work was already included in the original uh, request. Uh, we reviewed the budget, and we have we do have funds in, in a parks capital reserve uh, that those draw the the concrete funds could be drawn from. Uh, it didn't we didn't put a dollar figure to it, but you guys as council knew, know through our rates. Uh, Public Works has agreed that they could do the concrete work uh, for this project, and that was in the report. So, really, the additional ask is for funding for the steel, and uh, yeah, we you could direct that back to administration to bring some something back to council at the next meeting. But this gives the kinsmen the ability to move forward with, with the portion of the project if you feel that the ten thousand is something that. Uh, that you'd like to move forward with. Again, you guys all know where our budget is. Uh, it would, it's going to take some work to find it. But there's also the opportunity for grant funding yeah. and, and that as well. So I'm just going to ask how much is sitting in the parks reserve? It's, it, the parks reserve is 20000 It's a 19 and change. Uh, but that is the reserve for all the parks in the town. So, so that uh, the 15000 that would you know, if you were to take the other 10 from it, uh, that would pretty much deplete that, that reserve. And a few lines ago, you just looked at our reserve list. So I guess the big question is, that, does, yeah. does council want to move forward? Uh, or is $10,000 reasonable? Is it something you would like to direct administration to, uh, to look at? I guess the first one is, is are we interested in partnering with the Kidsman Club and having this project move forward? I think it's probably the first one. Um, so administration is recommending that we approve the Kidsman Club part project as presented and direct administration to oversee the installation through contribution from the service manager and the public works. And then I would end it there personally and then we can move on to the second part. At least that way then they can start the procedure if we did agree that we want to partner with them. Um, sure. I would make that motion. I think it's really important that we are there and do show our support, especially with them having a fairly large um, part with the pool in that entire project. You know, especially a lot more than any other kind of parts have shown. So I think that showing our support is definitely significant and something that we really need to put behind. Okay, so Michelle's motion is the first part and it just attends at the department. Any questions or discussion? Well, I think it's a wonderful idea, and you know, I just agree. Uh, especially in this COVID, and we've all been cooped up. I think this would be a great way for people to be able to kind of get back out at whatever they want to do. And a bit of excitement there. Yeah. I think like in the community, back in the swing of being a community again with all the busyness. Any other discussion on it? I just think this would be a, it might be a good opportunity for the private sector to, have a, to be able to contribute towards that as well, just like Michelle was saying. We're trying to get pumpkin grind up for the summer to come and feel good again, and it might also help raise some money through that. So I'm, I'm in favor of it. Yeah, I'm in favor. I think any type of recreation outdoors is, is good for the community. I, I would be in total favor of doing it. 100%. Okay, so yeah. yeah. And I think that because it's for sick it doesn't have to be team sport. And I think this team sport sometimes limits who, who wants to or can participate. So I think this would be an excellent opportunity. And then to be honest with you too, like you guys have all said too, is that this is really quite a multi-age group. I mean, um, we, we used to have a, quite a great um, 
group that went into summer games with sh horseshoe horseshoe pit, um, and this one here has now has some permanent horseshoe pits. So, but the horseshoe pits at the golf course gone? Yes. Um, I'm yes. not sure if they're still. In the yes, they were removed in two thousand and one. Oh, you <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, 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 when when they did that, uh, they did it because the senior center built portables. Yeah, they built some portables that so would go in that set parking lot. Oh, okay. in, in so the sand and so. But I mean, this might be an opportunity to expand that, you know, area and maybe even get into some opportunity between the adults and the youth to participate and learn how to play shoe horseshoes from somebody that knows how to play it. So. Okay. Any other discussion on Michelle's motion? Hearing none, we'll call the question. Okay, and it is carried unanimously. Okay, moving on to the second part. Do we wish to participate or do we want to direct the administration to try and find some methods of funding or, like Law said, you know, get the Kinsman Club in the town to participate, and whether it's through grants or through See if there's businesses out there that might, or people that might be wanting to participate in a little bit of a fundraiser. To the senior center might be interested in participating, you know, in terms of raising funds. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? But if we can, we could make a motion that we would, you know. Yeah, the, the kids been taking the lead on this project. I, I know that they're just looking at the town right now. I know lots of people will contribute to it, but the uh, really, this motion needs to, uh, to address the amount of money that uh, the council is willing to, to put towards it. it. Just as a town, uh, we had the conversation internally. It's, it's even great for us to say that we're going to apply for grants, but council cannot make a motion pending your grant funding, right? Like you, you need to have your motion, just like we did with the pool. We're hoping to get the grant, but in case we don't, the funds will be drawn from here. So on, on that note, taking it full circle, if council wanted to participate with the whole uh, request being the $5,000 for the, the concrete and the $10,000 for the steel uh, and the structures, you could make a motion to pull that out of that parks reserve, but also put in there that uh, you know, with the direction for applying for um, grant funding, those sort of things. Do you have a ballpark figure on what it costs to uh, run our parks this season? Oh, it's in our or our whole parks? Yeah, like what does it cost to run, to do everything in every park we have? Because if we pull 15,000 out and there's only 19 in there, does that mean it's really Oh, no, 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 no. That's, this is just capital funding. Operating and capital are completely different line items. I mean, if you're looking at just strictly George Lee, our parks, uh, we, we have parks and then we also have Virginia Mitchell so uh, cost us, we budget about $108,000 in the parks per year okay. and we also oh no sorry yeah uh, my detailed report we split everything out okay, so in, in, into that. Now, okay. now one thing to put in there uh, the swimming pool also has a park area, the, but, uh, but the parks itself, just expenses for mowing, right. all that stuff, about $100,000 a year. Okay. So that new funding that we were talking about today, is there any way that some of that can be designated for something like this? Or is that Abs Absolutely, and you can do that within the budget conversations. Well, that's why I was wondering if we should be thinking like putting this off the exact amount until we discuss some of that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's quite a bit bigger conversation about um, yeah. what what that contribution is. But of course, the la uh, the uh, the kinsman's being able to move forward is going to be relying on some of, some of it. So that's why uh, with the original motion being for the 5,000, and you know where that's going to come, you could actually move forward with that if you would like. And uh, so why don't 
it, it, it's really tough to get thrown something at a meeting and then try to put everything together for it. So can we do the 5,000 for sure and then add more to it as we go along if we want to contribute more in the town? Or does that have to be a separate meeting oh, or do we send it on a separate motion? For the, for the purposes of accounting for the money and, and putting it, yeah, we, you, you need to, that's why you always do your motions the way you do, X amount of dollars to be drawn from, because that, right. for the auditors, for the public, everybody, they know that's where the funding's coming from. Uh, you could put it in, out of the operation budget and then yeah. uh, with the $10,000 drawn from the operation budget and then you guys approve the budget in, in uh, in April, so we, you know, you can do it that way as well. So there, there are options, but you were also part of the conversation with the budget in in, in September and October when ten thousand dollars was an awful lot of money to be moving around in there. So, but th that's an option as well, is to is to pull uh, uh, to be drawn from the operation budget. And it didn't sound like the kids were. Wanting an instantaneous answer? No, no, I don't think so. I think they just need to know because I mean, again, too, depending on what kind of timeline and what type of, I mean, like Matt said, you know, steel prices are only guaranteed for 30 days, if that. And then once the steel is purchased, then there has to be fabrication, and then whether it's painted or you know, um, you know stainless steel or galvanized, there's another process. So I think to a degree they want to get moving on it, but they need to know whether we're interested in participating in whether five thousand dollars for the concrete or or ten thousand for this or fifteen thousand for the complete project or we even offered one that's not even on our radar is that we lend them the whole amount and then they pay it back as grants and things come in. So and you could word uh you could do it as three different motions. You could do the concrete, and then the council contribute up to ten thousand dollars to the cost of construction, leaving it fairly open to be drawn from the parks operating budget. So are we doing that in two separate? You, you should. Yeah, yeah. I would put the five thousand for the concrete to be drawn okay. from the parks reserve. capital reserve. Okay. So Lorna moves that we. Draw the five thousand dollars capital. As just as written there, as written council there. contributed five thousand dollars to the cost of concrete for this project, with the funds to be drawn from the parks capital reserve. Okay. Now, do we have to say anything about our parks? People will help. With, no. We no, we you did that through That's, the first motion. Okay. In coordination with uh, public works, our uh, community service manager, okay. and public works department. Okay. Any more discussion on the 5,000? Hearing none, we'll call the question. And it's carried unanimously. Okay, moving on now. Do we wish to participate somehow in the other part, or do we wish to leave it for now, or do we wish to. Um, what's the thoughts? The administration have time to put this together for our next council meeting. It is, but it's three weeks away. But yes, we, oh, could, we could put together, and then we would uh, we could uh, include the additional information that was provided by them tonight. And I think that's still within the Kinsman's timeline. Yeah. Well, I guess it depends on. I mean, to me, the, we saw on the swimming pool project the the diving tower or the. Um, Water slide, this, the stairs were held up for how long because of the steel not being able to be fabricated in a timely fashion. So, um, and, well, I shouldn't say fabricated, they were fabricated, but they couldn't, couldn't be galvanized. galvanized. So, I think that, you know, the sooner they know, the sooner they can get on, whether it's galvanized, painted, or steel, or um, powder coated. So, pros and cons to all of them. They did apply for some grants already, so giving the three weeks to the next meeting for approval does give you some time to. Uh, to find out about some ground information as well. And we got to be careful with the way we got beat up so bad by the, the other ground that we did for the pool. If we start, uh, you start relying on, relying on it, then we, we won't get it. So. 
it might be something we might want to not make a motion on, but yet to anticipate that in the back of our mind that we want this project to move forward, that they're going to have to do. Yeah. And, and the way uh, the way that they uh, uh, presented is just more the direction for moving forward. So. Um, this is one of our meetings that we have three weeks in between a meeting, but it would definitely give us time to figure out where the $10,000 would come from, whether it's best to come out of the operating, whether it could come from the uh, capital reserve. Because you, you could make a motion right now to pull it all out of your capital reserve. It just depletes that entire capital reserve. So, you know, well, at least $5,000 there. But you and I both know if we need something for uh, an irrigation system, something like that. Uh, Miles comment about community, you get raising money from the community. How the Ken's been doing this? I don't know. Sure. I, don't know. Uh, I don't know what we, you know, we hope that they would, you know, use some of their uh, abilities to do the marketing on that to, to, to go through some of the funding. But again, I don't think that they knew about it. I mean, we received this on Thursday or Friday, and then it changed over the weekend. Um, and then they tried to keep it very quiet until they knew they were, they had the ability to move ahead as well. They didn't want it out there in the community. <coughs> so well, I think with the fact that the grants are so iffy at times, like how you apply, and like if we said we'll give them $10,000, they can't apply for that maybe, you know, mm -hmm. so that might be cutting our legs off at that point. So, so anyway, um, Bob, they got a comment or? Well, I was just going to say, Personally, I like this idea, but we're representing a six million dollar business. I think we got to do our due diligence. So I will make the motion that we direct administration to come back with something for us for our next meeting, as to give us ideas as to how to proceed. The funding for the ten thousand, the additional ten thousand. Okay, so a lot of moves that uh, administration work with the Kinsman Club. Bring back a proposal for the, for the additional funding? For the additional funding, yeah. Fair. Does that sound fair? Yes. And it also gives the kids a good indication of the right behind it. Oh, I think so. Okay, any discussion on Bob's motion? Hearing none, I will call the question. That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Moving on to stop sign request. So, council had the chance to review the reports. Uh, this request has come in the past. Uh, it's just been resubmitted to council because the intersection, obviously, the, the street program that we did in 2020 opened up an intersection which. Uh, uh, the homeowners association feel has significantly impacted traffic so uh, it gave us the opportunity i got the letter rather than bringing it to council and having you just direct me to uh, to do a report again you'd already completed a report once so i directed the bylaw officer to go out and uh, gather fresh information with a fresh set of eyes he gave him the opportunity to put a report together for you you were able to read that report and saw the traffic flow. Uh, similar intersections, one in the Allen subdivision, uncontrolled, one at Whispering Drive, uncontrolled. He clocked 1,400, you know, through the four days, 1,400 vehicles through one intersection and 110 through the other. The reason why he did it, he did it a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and a Monday so he could see the different volumes on weekends, weekdays. The intersection in the Allen subdivision, uh, in the Allen Acres subdivision has been uncontrolled for 30 plus years uh, without incident. So uh, really uh, Tim's approach at this was to uh, show council actual traffic counts to help you make a good, uh, good decision on it. And as he addressed in there, uh, this sets precedence to any intersection in town that somebody wants a stop sign at, uh, allowing you to base it on data, not just on the request itself. 
because given given that situation, anybody that lives next to an intersection will make a request for a stop sign based on safety alone because we've all uh, we all see uh, traffic go through intersections faster than uh, than possibly what we feel it should be. So. The recommendation from there, uh, based on the traffic counts, was uh, remain consistent with the uh, findings from the 2018 report, and uh, we left the recommendation open whether uh, council would like to uh, approve or deny. But the recommendation from the peace officer is that traffic control devices are not required at that intersection. Any other comments or questions? I was just. This map that he's got here for yes. uncontrolled intersection number one. Yes. Is, so that's that's where the not where the arrow is. It's where the circle is. Yeah, yeah. the the arrow. Yeah, the arrow was the traffic, uh, the direction of traffic. That so he clocked everybody not coming into the subdivision. He clocked them going out because they had to have gotten in there somehow. And. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was at the uh, Allen Crescent and uh, intersection. And it looks like that's in the wrong spot because it should have been on the Aspen Way one. Yeah, because I'm. Yeah, the Allen Crescent Road was closed. Yes, yeah. that's, a, that's a mistake on the mapping. Yeah, I just yeah it was, sorry. It, it was, it, yeah, it was the Aspen Way and Allen Crescent intersection. So, apologize for that. Yeah. There's no road off 6th Avenue anymore. No. And I drove through there today, and I think part of the reason for the request is to go down with Spring Drive. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four stop signs, and then you come to the intersection that he's talking about. Yes. And they're not busy intersections. The, the other four are part of gated communities, right. and it was up to them to yeah. install those signs. Right, and that's been the request in the past is because of, but we've never had to much for a ton of data taken off because we've never had that road all the way through off of Cottonwood. And in any of those streets, none of them are terribly busy. No. No, based, on, based on the same request, uh, traffic-wise, then council would also, and that's why Tim's looking and mentioned the precedents that it would set, because based on, on the data, you should also be considering putting stop signs at every call to set. I think the one that I had someone talking to me about was where you come from the whispering, I'm going to call it green side, into Cot or onto Cottonwood. Mm. And I know one day I was standing there and they come flying over that hill and go fairly quickly. But it, I talked with Tim and he was going to monitor it. Yes, so he did some data logging in there as well uh, prior to this just on speed alone, and nobody was speeding in there either. So, maybe so it was the perception before, because everybody came to that intersection, and it was dead end, so they stopped. And everybody, right. So now people are actually going 50 kilometers an hour. It seems ridiculously fast, but it's still within the speed limit. So that started that other conversation which uh, Cap, that Tim put in his uh, most recent report, that he's also looking at uh, residential speed limits at possibly lowering to 40 because that's uh, more consistent with what people were traveling in that area. So. But based on the stop site, he did as much just unbiased data as he could provide so that council could, could, could make a, a decision with it. Okay, any other direction you want to give administration? I think we go off of Tim's report. He's the one that was out there doing the, the um, data on it and everything. So, um, so deny the request. Uh, yep, I'm good with his recommendation. Okay, so George Lee moves to deny the request. Okay, any further discussion or question? Hearing none. Call the question. And it's carried unanimously. Thank you. We will write a letter and 
provide a copy of resolution as well. Yep, moving on to the request that was generated because of a piece of paper that was sent out. <laughs> so, so this letter didn't come to council, it came to me directly. Um, and it's based on uh, what some other communities have done. Um, we did have some questions. Uh, there was some activity on Facebook and through uh, Vulcan, uh, Life in Vulcan as well had a discussion about that this summer. We didn't receive any official requests, so when this person uh, was asked it, it, what we were doing about it, we said that no official request had come in, so they uh, put a forward with official request. Based on the information, uh, we just did a quick, because it didn't contain it's, it's worth council's consideration if you would like to do something. Uh, if you would like to, you can direct us to put together a detailed report. Uh, other communities have put it in. Uh, some people, some communities have just all together just said, no, our bylaws is fine the way it is. So it's more for your guys' discussion. If you would like more information on urban chickens, then we will provide a report that will uh, let you decide whether you want to, uh, that will hopefully help you decide whether you want to amend the land use by law or not. Well, it's interesting to see that the roosters weren't included. Yeah, <laughs> and I know they can be pretty when, annoying. In looking into some other communities, it's, it's uh, they approved it, but they made it really stringent to get around. Like, you needed to have a completion of a certification class. To, uh, you'll uh, you have to open your property to regular inspections, those sort of things. Now, those, all that stuff could, we can put in a report. We just did some preliminary looking into it. Uh, we have to do it in a lot more detail, but we didn't want to spend a whole bunch of administration's time looking into it if it's not something council wants to move forward with. So, this is more to get your feelings. <laughs> I was just, for my two cents, I think if we're going to allow chickens in town, we should hire a person to monitor the chickens, people taking care of their chickens. I think we should also hire a person to monitor the cats, because if we have chickens and someone's going to want to monitor the cats, and then we should have someone to monitor the dogs, because we all know what, uh, there's dogs at park, and there's people that do not clean up after their dogs, and that's already a bylaw. So maybe we need to hire more bylaw officers if we're going to do something like this. And that's a really good point. Is we don't have the manpower to uh, or the expertise on this at this point. So there, there may be a, a, a more manpower that's involved in something like this. So let's assume that you, you're going to raise the funds for the to hire these three extra people from the licensing of the animals, whether it's chickens, cats, or dogs. How else are we going to pay for it? We're going to have to up the licenses for chickens, you know, cats, chickens for your cats, for your dogs. Everything's going to have to go up because someone's going to have to pay for it. Okay. No, I just wanted to make sure that I was on the same page or figuring out where. Yeah. Who wants to be a chicken? You, sorry? You say, who would want to be a chicken inspector? <laughs> well, I guess there must be yeah. some. Okay. Any thoughts, questions, directions? Yeah. Do you want administration putting time into you? Yeah, do we want to spend time forward. moving forward on this, or do we want to just... You haven't heard from anyone else? This is the only request we've had. Yeah. Only official request, and again, came to me as administration. Yeah. I'm... My feeling would be that if um, we get, you know, 30 people applying next week, we look into it. If we've only heard from one, so I'm inclined to say that we probably don't need to look after it. I hate to be mean, but is somebody willing to make a motion here to... Oh, what am I making a motion? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, with this report, you don't uh, have to do anything. With, with this report, you can receive it for information. Yeah, well. okay. And then, then you don't have to do anything with it. Uh, I was lo more looking for official motion if you wanted 
more information. More information put towards it because more information costs you administrative time. Okay. You know, so we, we you need a motion to either do something with it. Well, I'll, I'll make a motion to receive it for information. Okay. And if, if more in requests the, come in, if more requests come in, we'll look at it again. Okay. So Loretta moves this for information. For and, yeah, know. just end it there. Yeah. Okay. A discussion on the bonus motion. Hearing none, call the question. Well, I guess for Karen, yeah. still type in. Type in as fast as we can talk. Okay, it's very unanimously. Okay, moving on to committee reports. Um, so we've got one there from. Vulcan Regional Victim Services. Any questions on the I'm pretty sure George Lee probably highlighted most of this at the last meeting, but any questions on that one? Hearing none, we'll move on to fresh minutes of February twenty-fourth. And again, I'm pretty sure Paul mentioned most of this information at the last meeting. Just a curious one with the TELUS agreement. It's with each and every community. Oh, I'm sure. It's not with Fresk. Right. No, I mean, they... They collect on RBI. Yeah. 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 But I mean, t tell us has appealed their assessments forever. They have a full department. That's all they do is to appeal. So I, I, I think you're 100% right, Paul. They, they don't just pick on one organization. They pick on everybody they can oh, yeah. to save a penny. So it can all can be sent to Toronto. To well, we've kind of got them over a bit of a barrel because there's been a 90-day appeal time, which means 2019 way past. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're only talking about 2020. And instead of almost 57,000, now we've got it down to 37,000. Okay, so any other questions on this one here at all? Okay, here and now we'll move on to NPCs. I see you have to be looking for a new, another new member soon. Hmm. Oh, is he moving? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's almost not a question anymore. Oh, I knew the house was sold. I, I know this one's number 48, I think it is, in 60 years. Oh, that's hot. Okay, any questions for any on NPCs? Here and on, move on the golf club. Any questions on that one? Okay, moving on to Orsk. Negative. Any questions on that one? And we'll move on to regional response to elder abuse council. And again, I think that you had quite a good information at the last meeting. Anything else? That I don't know if it was just an email I saw recently, but the numbers of cases they've had in January and February was like nine or something, and mm -hmm. three of it. Yeah, that's quite scary. There's a lot of stressed people out there. Okay, anything on any of those six? If not, some you wish to file the community reports for the information. Oh, Laura, thank you. Okay, any discussion on Laura's motion? Hearing none, we'll call a question. And it's carried unanimously. Okay, moving on to verbal ones. Councilor Taylor. I'm going to 
did a press Zoom meeting in uh, MPC and golf course. And the other thing that did come up is I had several comments about the fence around the uh, swimming pool, the wooden fence. Oh, yes. And they're not favorable comments. Is that good? Once it gets painted, it'll look different. Yeah. 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 yeah, we still have to wait for paint. Yeah, but it's just a Wall. Yeah. Well, and, and again, some of us knew that it was going to happen because of uh, what the uh, um, what's the the climbing ability of a property, you know. So the security security issues. So, so you know, I've heard that from a couple. You know, the one resident that lives close that has issues with the way it looks. But I think once you get it painted. And, we take the other fence down and get some landscaping done. I think that uh, people's philosophies of the fence might change from what the old one did. I mean, the only difference between this one and the old one is this one's a foot higher. And the old one had two windows on the one side and one window on the other side, and that's it. So um, I guess there was three, win four windows across by the, by the basketball hoops, but for a while there you couldn't get to it because there was a waiting tool that was there. So. I think that once it's painted. Um, so is it eight feet now? No, it's it's, it's, it's ten now. Yeah. And it was. No uh, one was nine. Oh, yeah. I didn't think it was even that high. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, when we uh, talked to the engineers about it and the architect, it is solely uh, to keep people from being able to climb over it. There is just Easily, yeah. you, there is not the nor a normal person. Could not jump at scale and grab over that fence. And now scale. there are some communities that were successful and got away with chain link, um, but there is downfalls of chain link. You know, um, the, did they put wire on top? No, we can't have the wire on the top. That's mm -hmm. illegal. Oh, is it? Yeah. And if you put the you razor in wire, yeah. <laughs> razor, razor wire. If you put the razor on the top. I mean, the person that proved that will be have a liability issue on them personally. I'm sure. Okay. No, we, we honestly thought, most of us thought that it would be chain link, but um, Alberta Health came back and suggested that it would not be. Chain link's easy to climb. Relative. Well, they, yeah. they are relatively easy to climb. And then the other problem is, is that usually on the top of the chain link, there's things that there's stick out. Snag hazard. And then all of a sudden now you are liable because of it. And, but, but I mean, some communities have them. I mean, I toured 10, 15 of them that have them, but unfortunately. But anyway, I think you know we need to look at it and say that maybe down the road we can add a window too if we wish. Um, also, we have to worry about costs too. You know, if somebody wishes to make some donations and cash towards changing the style of it, I think that you know the community be more than in favor of uh, looking at different types of windows or uh, uh, fencing if they're willing to come up with some money. So I, I mentioned that to, to one person that if they would like to come up with another, you know, two or three hundred thousand dollars we can give them, you know, add to the one water slide. But okay, anything else, Paul? That's all I've got. Okay, thank you. Uh, Nicole, oh, yeah, any questions for Paul? Okay, thank you. Councillor DeVolt. Um, I had elder abuse and June 7th to the 13th is seniors week. This year, um, June fifteenth is Elder or Elder Abuse Awareness Day, and we have enough money that we could keep the project manager going for two more months. Okay. And then that's. that's it. And then she's going to try to give um, a lesser job description, so maybe we could put it more into the the budget that we have to cut her hours back and that. Um. We did put in for two more grants. So if we get them, we'll be able to keep her on more. Um, they're going to go with the purple seeds again this year because they said they're, they're always a hit. The people like those purple seeds for the flowers. And um, they're going to put larger ribbons on a pole this year, too. And Because uh, everybody's complaining that the other purple ribbons, they can always be too small. They're going to be bigger ribbon this year. And in... Um, Victim services, 
I think that now let's take that the project manager for victim services, she's going to start taking over some duties for elder abuse because basically that's a people phone that phone number anyway because they look at it as a type of victim when it's elder abuse. So Jasmine's going to start taking over a lot more responsibilities. So then that might um, help out the money situation with elder abuse. And um, just a lot of discussion on different um, insurance policies for the project manager, trying to find a group policy for her, which she's not a group. Basically, she's only her and her daughter, so it's, it's kind of hard on it. And that's, oh, budget. We didn't get a chance to do the budget, so there'll be another meeting for budget tomorrow. Because yeah. there's a lot of money there that's got to be spent by March 31st. And so we have to get it in before the end of the month. And that's about it. Okay, any questions for George Reed? Very none, thank you. Moving on to Councillor Raggs. Uh, I just had the MPC meeting and uh, just got the draft minutes of it. That's all I have discussed. Okay, any questions for Lana? Thank you. Okay, Councillor Thomas. Um, I had no meetings this last go round. Our uh, library meeting had to be bumped to tomorrow due to Zoom time through Chinook Arch. That's all we could get time scheduled to them. Okay, any questions for us? Okay, thank you. Moving on to Councillor Roddy. Um, I didn't have any meetings this go around, but offering city teachers, and the same thing like they're going through tonight and doing all the um, reports with the IRC and stuff like that. But I've had two set people, and then now three with Lorna, of um, really good feedback in terms of some of the different business cultures and stuff that they've been using, particularly in our area. So. Okay. Any questions for Michelle? Okay. Thank you, Councillor Armstrong. I have nothing, and because there's five weeks, my meetings are the last week of the month and the next week. So. Okay. That's good. Okay, any questions for Anna? Thank you, Anna. Okay, I only had two, uh, or I only had one, I should say, an executive for SEWA. And then we have this week coming up, we have a, supposed to have solid waste on Wednesday this week, and if not, it'll be next week at Wednesday, but either way. Um, and, um, and then a SEWA board meeting on Friday in Wheatland County where we're doing a little bit of strategic planning session on to see what we can do to move the project forward. So any questions for me? So you said you never got your grant. Right. So like, is there other opportunities? To well, there is, I mean, there, there's, and that, I think that's partly what we're trying to do is, you know, we, we created a list of about seven ways we could go and uh, we'll weigh all of them and see which way the board wishes to, to move the project forward. It's like that's been like 10 years of hard it is, work. And it's, um, I, no, I, I still think that this project will go forward someday, somewhere. Um, I mean, the government keeps on putting more pressure on uh, waste authorities to, that have a landfill. More costs are going in. Um, so, I mean, when you have to now amortize your, your cost of your landfill and on a yearly basis and something like we did when we had to do the amortization of all their you know, capital yes. assets. Um, the waste authority is going to have to do it back for the municipalities that are partners in them. So then what's going to end up happening is a lot of the municipalities with the landfill are going to have to cover cover that cost of amortization of the, of the post closure, which most landfills are five to ten million dollars for post closure. And so I think when that happens, then a lot of them are going to say, hey, it's cheaper to, to look at um, incinerating than it is to burying. So I think the cost on that is going to go up higher than what it is right now. So anything else for me? Thank you. We'll move on to administrations. Oh, yeah, that's right. Thank you very much. Yeah, we need to have a motion to receive the. Councillor Paul. 
had too many check marks and didn't. <laughs> Any discussion on Paul's motion? Hearing none, call the question. It's carried unanimously. Okay, now we'll move on to actions items. On the management activity report, we uh, we completed everything from the last meeting. Obviously, did the bylaw reading from the meeting before that, and from long-standing, outstanding items. One of the ones that I wanted that we darkened out the one for the agreement for this individual service for uh, for water servicing that has been sent to the county, and they've had it for the last couple of weeks. So. Everything that we can do, aside from approving it, has been done. So we, we completed it off our list. Unless there's anything that uh, outstanding that council has questions on, that's that report. Okay. Um, on to mid March COs. Am I uh, really we got uh, Rob started here in the office on uh, March fifteenth him right into an MPC meeting the next day. Uh, he's pretty overwhelmed with the amount of information that he's taken in, but uh, uh, it's only been out in a week, so hopefully we'll be able to, uh, uh, he'll gain some confidence uh, the more he sees some of the structure that's going on, but uh, overall it's going fairly well so far. Uh, really, I've just been working on, uh, obviously, obviously the, uh, updates to the mayor appointment and through the procedural bylaw that's taken quite a bit of time uh, the ICF agreement working with the county to get that in the bylaw drafted up uh, when we received it and yeah other than uh, normal business through I've uh, tried to hit on everything in my report unless there's something that stands out we did have uh, a new GIS training for our new GIS that I attended uh, that was uh, the new system is, is really a lot more user friendly so I know uh, for the majority of people that do use it on a regular basis how much of a valuable tool it is for uh, and so we're hoping to have the public side of that uh, ready to go up pretty soon uh, right now on our website it's the old site but we internally have been using the new one uh, fairly regularly and the training really, really help. So, yeah, other than that. Any questions? There's there none. Somebody wish to move the administration reports? George Lee. Any discussion on George Lee's motion? Okay, there is none. We'll call the question. Is carried unanimously. Okay, looking at one more motion. German, Michelle, thank you. Those in favor, or those I should say, I call the question. <laughs> no, we're not going to be able to go. Carrie's <laughs> <laughs> not going to send you a motion. I uh, put it in the wrong spot, so I'll send the motion and enter everything. Okay. So, that is, yeah. Carry the so we are officially adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. And for those that are watching on Moody, no, is this my computer that it keeps flipping back to the right screen? I'm not sure. So it goes back to the login screen. As soon as I log in, it takes me right back to where.